Over the last fortnight, we've been covering and dissecting an unusual number of issues that have involved race. On this push to change the Constitution in order to have an Indigenous voice to Parliament, the debate has been at times fierce. And the single most ridiculous claim has been that if you demand to know more about what this voice will entail and therefore are not instantly a fan, you're accused of being racist or even a saboteur. I think there's two very succinct things that you can say about that. One, that it's being railroaded by the Liberal Party because of the rednecks and racists in their own ranks. See, those who peddle that line, by the way, are seriously demented and are probably best suited living in, say, Russia, North Korea, where free speech will see you locked up. Then there's the outrageous decision by the new Northern Territory Chief Minister to drop the decades-old restrictions on who can purchase alcohol. Again, you dare go into bat for the scheme and argue that those who are problem drinkers, who have a criminal record because of their alcohol abuse, need to be restricted in their consumption of alcohol and you'll again be tagged a racist. The fact that elders are now reporting terrible alcohol-induced crimes and chaos in remote communities already doesn't seem to matter. But no, we won't be putting back in place a race-based law that discriminates purely on your race. Absolutely, we will continue to do the hard work and the heavy lifting when it comes to alcohol policies, but it will be broad across the Northern Territory, not targeting people just because they're Aboriginal, which is what that law did. And yet we have laws based on social security where you receive welfare based on race. It's the principle of treating everyone equally, you see, as she said, even though in doing so you create a larger problem and put very vulnerable people and children at death's door. And the same applies to the elimination of the cashless welfare card. How dare you point to the advantages gained in remote communities where money is able to be set aside for things like food, clothing and schooling all of a sudden and not weed up against the wall? It's a forced form of welfare, yes, that can and has worked. Speak to the mayors in these areas. But the old warm and fuzzy Labor Party has gone cold on that as well. The government thinks the symbolism of equality is far more important than lending a helping hand to those who can't manage our welfare dollars. And again, the nutcases will call you racist if you're supporting the card to stay. With all of that in mind, can someone please tell me where have those who jump on fake examples of racism at the drop of a hat gone this week when the government tried to deport that Scottish family who'd been here for 10 years? Where are those who become so regularly offended at racist actions or words? Where are they? Because I am telling you, this government looks, for all intents and purposes to be acting in a very racist way on this particular application. It was a point made today by the father, Mark Green, on Sky News. Through no fault of our own, we have just been passed from pillar to post, uh, not being able to complete our three years to gain our permanent residence. Uh, and all we are looking for is a fair chance. Uh, I've been here for 10 years paying, paying taxes, just like the rest of my family. And uh, we just need that fair chance so that we can then apply for a visa onshore. Because just now we're on a bridging visa, which means we need to leave the country. Let me put a qualification into what I'm about to say. I have Scottish blood, so maybe I'm biased. But how can you allow the Sri Lankan family to live in Biloela to receive a permanent visa after being here for less than four years and never being classified as legitimate refugees and came here illegally, while at the same time you order the deportation of the Green family, who hail from Scotland, the source of 2.2 million of our citizens, who have also worked hard for a full decade, and they want to stay. They actually arrived here legally. Gee, it looks awfully like a race-based decision, that one. The poor family from once war-torn Sri Lanka, they get permission to stay, but the Anglos from Scotland, mm-mm. Just have a look at our case. All we want is a fair chance. All we need is to be put onto a different bridging visa and then we can actually pay for our own 
permanent residents from there. We're not asking for handouts, we're just asking for a fair chance. He's not a bludger, he's a hard worker, we don't have workers. What more do you need to argue his point? Now, as you'd know by now, the Immigration Minister ordered the Greens to leave last night, but at the 11th hour extended their stay by a month so that they can take further legal action in the hope of remaining here. But how dare they leave this family in the lurch as they pack their belongings ready to go to the airport? Could the government be any crueler than that? Now, this is where the minister needs to show some backbone and fairness. And I know he's new. You see, it wasn't a court or a tribunal which ruled in favour of the Biloela family. No agency, no judge. None of them handed them a permanent visa. Immigration Minister Adam Giles did. So why the hell, under such similar circumstances, hasn't Giles signed off on, on a permanent visa for the Greens as well? Is he a scaredy cat? It was Anthony Albanese who wanted to create this precedent, remember? Paul, I've been to Biloela. So uh, the community want them back and they should return home to Biloela. And so does the community surrounding the Greens. So true to his promise, when he came into power, he handed the Biloela family the visa they have been craving for. I would argue that given Australia's historic connection to the United Kingdom and Scotland, given how long the Greens have been working in South Australia and given their unblemished legal and criminal record and the fact that they didn't come here illegally, they deserve greater priority than the family who now lives in Biloela, probably forever. So, Adam Giles, I know the boss is laying in the sun in Broome on a holiday at the moment, but you have the constitutional power tonight to grant the Green family a permanent visa. Albo doesn't need to countersign anything. And given the dangerous precedent you and he created when it came to the Billa Wheeler family, you are obliged to step in on this case and stop putting this beautiful family who love this country immensely through the ringer. So, as you can see, we are dealing with a lot more issues at the moment that involve race. But it's this issue which has an easier solution than all the others and deserves government intervention. Anything else has the stench of legitimate racism.